Hello world, greatgeezapyramid.com. Working out on uh, my pyramid here. Not going to be using water jugs. I am, however, going to ask that you hop over to this website here uh, to follow along with the pictures. So you can go ahead. There's a URL. You can type it in. I used a piece of styrofoam, and I went ahead and built a semi-horrible simulation of the lower section of the pyramid. Now, in doing so, I took into account things that were left out over here that were very important and were the reason that Mr. Cadman, who dedicated this map to me, actually his website did, uh, you can look him up. He has a hydraulic pump, and he found evidence in this room of um, the what a hydraulic pump would have left. And I say he was correct, but he was incorrect on appending pieces that don't belong there to get the job done. If you kind of sit where this guy is sitting, which is, where's my finger? Right here. Sorry, I'm looking through the camera. So that is right there, and it winds up if you kind of sit there. There is a ring that goes all the way around. I have other pictures you can see. It goes all the way around. Can't say, at least in those pictures, that it goes around the bottom, but that's not relevant. What is relevant is there's about an inch or two inch dig into the roof line. And what that dig into the roof line does that is simulated by this right here. What's happening is, as we see in the next picture, as if the hydrogen does get down below this point, it is kind of, this is a, a look at it like a reverse ramp, pulling the hydrogen back up as the oxygen flows through to coax the hydrogen back in. And maybe getting the hydrogen to bond with the oxygen because of that. There may be interplay, I'm not sure. But either way, the oxygen is bubbling off the edge and falling into that pit. When it falls into that pit, it's going to create a bubble that's going to eventually climb across and bubble out. Now, because I did this on such a small scale, mine, when I put it all back together and it's running, the bubble actually lives there and it kind of goes all the way to here. It just, when it bubbles in, it bubbles off. If this was much bigger, like feet in size, you'd get a much nicer reaction. And uh, if John Cadman would run his simulation using this corrected information, I think he will get some amazing results. Now, the way I did get it, and I, I did get the math right, luckily, or at least the levels, when this bubbles off, it's going to fill the pool here. But because this is slightly higher than this side, I even niched it over there, kind of how they did in theirs. Um, I think they actually have it amazingly going across and coming back out the other side. I, the exact math up here, I'd love to get and eventually want to get into CAD and eventually want to print this out and maybe do something, maybe quarter scale or something and see what it's doing. But I have it bubble in. I have the math, as I'm assuming they did, where this is just a tiny bit higher so the hydrogen bubbles into this room is collected there and the oxygen which would run below it would work its way out and bubble into here. That's kind of like your separator. And then this would gather and go up. Now every time a bubble goes up, you're going to get a push down of water. Now I think that push down of water is going to be of just the right frequency to leave these piles. I think it would leave piles on this side too, but because this is constantly bubbling off, there's going to be more of a flow on this side and this this water is more stagnant and only when it gets that boom, boom, boom. And that frequency is what Mr. Cadman was calculating when he found all his evidence of what was going on. This is where the hydrogen would come up into this room, would travel across. There's a, um, a color picture where you can still see where this is kind of like a hydrogen bridge because the oxygen would be coming across beneath it, but there's like a hydrogen bridge that goes across there and just skims right out. So that works its way. Now this I put here. I don't have it on my little thing because I didn't go all the way up, but it is here. 
you can see that this opening is actually below the roof line of the upshaft. Now that's important because the oxygen after it bloops is going to run up after it actually does its blip blip thing right over this lip, blip blip, and comes across, and which is why in the pictures they you see like here it's it's smooth because that oxygen bubble would come up and then it would hit the roof, it would smack against the roof there, and which is why from there on up it's kind of ripply and you know, it's got all that water pounding on it, the same reason as the other one. Now, don't get lost by the fact that there was this mark. I don't, I don't think these guys came down there and spray painted it. That was there. That was left for communication, just like we will find when we dissect it eventually, hopefully. Get some Brainiac, run it through some of those com supercomputers we have in Utah. We, uh, we dump millions of gallons of water into. All the markings on the top of these terminals are communication. They are not there for function. That is evident by the fact that all this stuff is on top of it. The sediment is on top of it. This is not somebody dug the hole and shoved it up there. That was sitting there. And that is left from all the turbulence that's happening in this room. When it settles, it settles there. Those are there for communication. The sediment wound up setting, settling there. and you know, it didn't matter if it covered it because it was there for communication, not function. That is that is part of communication. We will we will get to how and why uh, in in later videos. You you want to start trying to figure it out and help me with that? Watch some of uh, Carl Monk's videos and uh, pay attention to what he says and how the math is involved here. This is the down shoot that comes off the side. It, it's the same as this area here. It comes off at an angle below the roof line. It kind of curves in and back and down at the same time. And we can get into how and why, and I'd rather go with the exact numbers, but I'm going to make my model assuming a couple of things. And also because I'm not going to go with the depth, I'm going to have to truncate it kind of like I did here. So I'm, I'm not going to get identical results, I'm going to get similar results. Um, back to that picture and there's one other picture this one which uh, just is kind of a plug for my uh, great Giza cover up that's a new one I'm going to add to it they've since kind of covered that over a bit that is um, now kind of I'm, I'm assuming that that hydrogen which is pushed down the other side bubbles across forcing the oxygen and hydrogen to mix uh, at a second point in addition to the point where they bubble over each other uh, just before the uh, you know, cavitation pump thingy, hydro, hydraulic ram pump action, which uh, kind of splishes the water when it, I'm going to assume stuff comes down because of that. There's a push in there. It does its whole frequency, and the frequency is back, and the heavy water is going to get sloshed out as the clean water comes in, um, and it's eventually going to swish its way up and start falling into that well, which is off to the side. And then from there, because there's uh, electrolysis, Occurring between this rock and the grotto, you're going to get a suction as new water is needed to replenish the ever-breaking ever water that's breaking in the grotto. And um, that's basically what I'm going to demonstrate. And uh, anyone who wishes to help me by helping with models of any type or wishes to uh, aid me with any pictures that would either say, no, that's not exactly how it's shaped here, it's shaped like this, I will gladly go off the pictures as long as they're not within the last three decades, um, that can aid me. Uh, I, I preface the last three decades because we've done major modifications because they want it to be a tomb and not the awesome structure that it actually is. Please stay, stay tuned for a semi-functioning model. Okay, at this point, I have taken the styrofoam, which is really nothing more than this, and I've put it on a piece of um, uh, this type board. I don't know what you want to call it. It uh, is a little bit flimsy, unfortunately, but uh, it's, yeah, you know what I got to work with. I went and I did a bead of uh, two, actually, two rows of, it's just uh, black, uh, uh, duct tape and circled it around. When I did it before, uh, and I even though I put this on and I'm going to clamp this down, 
it still leaks like a sieve. And I luckily, uh, because I'm working with, uh, you know, with it, like I said many times, a system that is willing to give, I was able to kind of let the water flow through the cracks, but since there was enough water was coming in, I still got to play with the reactions. But in order to do it properly, I'm going to have to probably press down on this when I get it up because I have to invert it and in order to keep the air bubbles in there, otherwise they just come up and uh, don't really get a good reaction. But in a few minutes, I'm going to clamp these down with these cool little clampies that were donated by, by one of my donators and uh, play with this. And uh, I got the two air hoses come up. I'm going to play there and I'm going to wind up putting some sort of lead in with, uh, with the water. I was just using a hose before. I may still do that. Don't know. We'll find out in a few minutes. Thank you. Okay, here we are with the uh, initial fill. Um, it's kind of at this point just going to be a big bath because the, uh, as you can see, well, no, actually, this is, now here, there's a bunch of water in there. going to have to play with that. And I think it's just filling up this whole bottom part of the bath. But when it gets up there, um, oxygen comes through, so I don't really get a nice tight bubble there, but uh, it's okay. I just blow more bubbles to compensate for it. Here right now is my intake, and I'm going to turn that up and play with the system and uh, kind of get it to a happy medium, and then I can start blowing bubbles, or to a happy uh, symmetry, really.